Pain 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Dennis McBride of Wauwatosa is a Democratic candidate in the 13th Assembly District. Dennis, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you. Um, what do you consider a top issue in your campaign? Without question, education. Education. Public schools, funding for public schools, and the impact that voucher schools are having on the funding for public schools. This current state budget included a significant increase in state aid to K-12. You're saying we need another major bump in the next budget? Governor Walker has called himself the education governor. He's anything but that. He cut $3.5 billion out of our funding for schools, all schools, and then put some of that back in the last go-round. It was because of groups like the one that I co-founded, Support Our Schools Wauwatosa, SOS Wauwatosa, and other groups like it around the state, Wisconsin Public Education Network, affiliated groups mm -hmm. that $200 per pupil was put back in, but it wasn't enough to make up for the cuts. The reason he's calling himself an education governor, and my opponent is trumpeting uh, the restored funding, semi-restored funding, is that if you don't adjust for inflation, it looks like more money. But if you do adjust for inflation, it's less money. So as one of the gubernatorial candidates said, if you stick the knife in six inches but only pull it back three, you're still in three inches. So we need to restore full funding for our schools. Does that include a new uh, school aid funding formula? If so, what would be the central elements of it? Well, it certainly includes a new formula. I, I'm not an expert on school funding formulas, but uh, that's something I want to work on. One of the major problems we have in this state is the lack of equity. Our state constitution requires what's called uniformity among school districts and students. And we have anything but that because some districts, the students get $8,000 a year and others like Nicolet, they get $15,000 a year. So there's a real disparity in yeah, funding. Yeah, it's kind of based on whether you're considered property rich or property poor. Right. If we had to raise 300, 400, 500 million more for K-12, have you thought about where you get the money? People have been asking me that. I've knocked on over 4,000 doors already. And people ask me that all the time, and I say, we don't need to spend more, we need to spend more wisely. So we've spent, we are gonna spend four and a half billion dollars on Foxconn. We're gonna get $121 million as a result of the US Supreme Court decision allowing states to tax online purchases. Mm -hmm. Governor Walker gave away $137 million in, uh, shall I say, inducements to vote. Uh, in August, it just the timing was just curious. The hundred dollar per child rebate. Hundred dollar per child rebate. So there, uh, I, I could go on, but there are all kinds of ways that we could uh, reprioritize, and that's what I've been saying to people. Again, we need to spend more wisely. It's a question of our priorities, and education has to be one of our priorities. Uh, you mentioned voucher, the choice program. It's going mm -hmm. from grown from Milwaukee to Racine to statewide. Right. Uh, do you want to kill it? Yes. Why? Well, first of all, we can't afford two publicly funded school systems. If you're going to do that, let's have that discussion. Let's set aside the money so that the public schools are fully funded, and then if you want to have a separate publicly funded school system, we can do that. But instead, what they do is they launder the money through the school system, so that if you came and asked for a voucher, you would go to, if you were in Brookfield, you'd go to the Elmbrook School District, and you'd say, I want my child to get a voucher. That money would go into Elmbrook and it would go out the back door to the voucher school. So it looks like the money's going to Elmbrook, but in fact it's not. It's going somewhere else. And uh, so it, uh, the governor can say we're giving you know, X amount of dollars to Elmbrook, but he's really giving X minus Y, and that Y is the voucher funding. But we don't have enough money in this state to fund that. And the ultimate result of this program would be that it would kill all public schools. And the reason is, 85% of the students who are, are uh, getting vouchers were never in the public schools in the first place. So th they try to use the term choice, but there's no choice there. They already chose to be in the private schools. What that is doing, though, is just taking the money away from the public schools. And if everybody in the private systems took a voucher, there wouldn't be any money left for public schools. 
You mentioned Foxconn. You consider those tax breaks a bad, a bad deal? I wouldn't have voted for it in the first place. If I would have voted for it at all, it would have been up to, say, a billion dollars, which is still a lot of money for a state like ours. But four and a half billion dollars is irresponsible spending. And if you gave me $370,000 per worker, I'd start a business and make sure that everybody got a lot of money. But what I've been telling people at Doors is, I've actually literally apologized to my three children for the debt load that we're putting on them, both at the state level and the federal level with all of these uh, tax breaks for corporations. And even if Foxconn uh, were a good deal, now we have Kimberly Clark and Governor Walker's trying to give the same deal to Kimberly Clark. Well, what's to stop the next company from saying, well, now it's my turn for the same handout? It's a very bad precedent. You're a former member of the uh, TOSA Council, correct? Yes. Uh, local governments like the TOSA Council have lived with levy limits for 14 years. Yes. Um, time to get rid of them, loosen them, keep them. They control property taxes, as you know. At a minimum, what we have to do is make sure that they rise at the level of inflation. I'm not for a, a big increase in property taxes, but again, we need to index them. The reason is that the only, we have two ways to, to raise the property tax levy so that we can keep our municipal workers. 75 to 80 percent of the spending at the local level is municipal workers, so the people who pick up your garbage, the people who plow your snow, the people who collect the taxes, the people who make sure the bills are paid, the janitors, etc. That all comes out of the property tax, about 75 to 80 percent. If you keep reducing our ability to, to pay for those people, inevitably we're going to have to get rid of some of them. Mm -hmm. Tom Barrett has been excoriated for closing five fire stations in Milwaukee, but that's the direct result of the fact that the property tax levy is not indexed to inflation. We want to keep our firefighters in Wauwatosa. We want to make sure that other municipalities can keep their firefighters, their garbage collectors, their snow plowers, and all the rest of it. But you can't do that if you don't allow the property tax levy to rise at the rate of inflation. Now, in Wauwatosa, we've been really good about redeveloping old, uh, worn-out industrial properties. We put luxury apartments on Superfund sites, and we've been able to replace uh, old, uh, defunct warehouses with retail. But sooner or later, we run out of land to do that, and at, at some point, inevitably, we're going to have to start laying off workers if there isn't some loosening of that. The impasse in the capital over how we pay for highways, bridges, construction, and maintenance, how would, how would you like to see it broken? Well, first of all, um, it needs to be said that Governor Walker is spending a lot less on infrastructure than his predecessors. So he's failed at that. And people who voted with him, like my opponent, have failed at that as well. The way to do it is to, again, look at what is more important, spending $4.5 billion, $370,000 per worker at a place like Foxconn, or doing something about our roads, our bridges, and our schools. So you take that money and you make sure that you invest in the future. And what I've been saying to people is, when I go to the doors, is you have a beautiful house, but if you didn't have a good foundation, it wouldn't be worth a dime. The foundation of our economy is our roads, our bridges, internet service, a good workforce, an opportunity for our children. Those are the things that are the foundation of the economy. And so we have to reprioritize our spending and make sure that our, our infrastructure is in good shape. I was just at a door in Elm Grove yesterday. And, the, and I started talking about roads and bridges, and the woman said, you know, I have a friend who's an engineer for the State Department of Transportation. And she said, you ought to be frightened to death about the condition of some of our bridges in this state. You know, in Minneapolis, not too many years ago, the interstate bridge collapsed. And that's Minneapolis, a place that does a good job taking care of its infrastructure generally, and, and we're failing. To meet those needs, could you raise the gas tax, the vehicle registration fee, or consider tolling, which is being discussed in the Capitol? I'm not a fan of tolling, but uh, again, indexing. We were, under both Republicans and Democrats before, we indexed the gas tax. And my understanding is that if we did that, our gas tax would go up less than one penny per gallon, 0.8, per, 8, 8 cent. So uh, again, it wouldn't be a big hit on anyone. It, it, it would go up at the rate of inflation. So again, in real dollars, it wouldn't be an increase in taxes. The debate over the State Department of Corrections, some Democratic candidates for governor said we could eventually cut our prison population in half. My question is, do we need a new state prison? We have two that were built in the 1800s. Well, we certainly have to 
uh, take a look at our needs, and we, sh we shouldn't have prisons that date back to the 1800s. I actually toured Waupun when I was a law clerk to a federal judge right out of law school, and it was a pretty eye-opening experience. I, I mean, I saw the whole prison. I saw where the license plates are made. I saw the exercise yard. I saw the cells. So uh, that, that's a need, but what we are doing, and former Governor Thompson has apologized for the amount of spending we've done, the emphasis we've done on building new prisons rather than rehabilitating people to return them to society. We are spending more on prisons than we are on the UW system. That, I mean, that's an astonishing number. We should be, again, investing in the future rather than investing in the past, and the past is these crimes. We need to rehabilitate people to return them to society to make them productive. If, so, we, do and, that, and we, if we do that, we don't need a new state prison? We might not. Okay. The, you mentioned the UW system. Should we continue for a seventh and eighth year the freeze on resident undergrad tuition? I think that's a mistake. I understand the, the political value of that. And I have a child at, at UW-Madison. I just had another one graduate uh, a year ago. Um, people like me who can afford to send their children at full tuition, which I do, should, uh, should pay more. And, the, and we, what we should do, instead of freezing everything for people who are rich as well as not rich, we should increase financial aid so that the burden is less on the people who have less money and more on people like me who can afford to pay a few dollars more. The bills in the capital that would legalize medical and recreational marijuana. Your positions? I'm in favor of it. I think it's of, been a of both both steps? Yes, I, I think that uh, and it's been interesting. I've been talking to conservative Republicans and liberal Democrats and everybody in between and everyone seems to think it's time for that. We spend far too much of our resources on tracking down small-time uh, users we put a lot of people in jail. A lot of those prisons we just talked about are filled with people who used a little bit of marijuana. And we've had the same impact on our, on our culture as, as we did during the prohibition era with the uh, prohibition of alcohol. And I think we need to focus, and, and marijuana by itself is no more dangerous than alcohol. So I think we need to be more sensible about our approach to, to uh, policing that. I'm sure on the door as you hear about health care. Let, let me ask the question this way. How can we protect and expand rural health care? Your thoughts? Well, that's difficult. I have a twin brother who is a retired medical professor at UW-Madison, so I do talk to him about that. Uh, and one of the hardest things is just getting health professionals into rural areas. And so um, I know the Medical College of Wisconsin is expanding its reach up into uh, the Fox Valley and the Marshfield uh, Clinic is uh, trying to set up a medical school. And those are good first steps. We ought to support that. Just the way the state supports uh, Marquette Dental School because it's the only way for us to get dentists to, to that area. And w we may need to create financial incentives the way the uh, National Health Service has incentives for uh, physicians to be in rural areas as well. But we clearly have to have primary care where it's needed. And one thing that's worked to some extent in the inner city of Milwaukee is to have clinics staffed by nurse practitioners, for example. So it may be a more affordable way to do that, but if it, it, preventive medicine is cheaper medicine. If we can provide care up front, we can solve a lot of problems at the other end. The state government have a role in recruiting and retaining doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals? It, it has to if, if we have a shortage in those areas where people have the greatest needs. In rural areas, uh, state government and Delta Dental subsidize dental, dental clinics. Should this remain a priority in the next MA budget, the next Medicaid budget? Yes, because uh, one thing that we've learned over the years, and I'm clearly no expert on that because I'm a lawyer and not a doctor or a dentist, but uh, dentists and dental hygienists are often the first line of defense for some things. There's a reason why they, they, they look at your tongue and all the rest of it. They're looking for oral cancers and other things. Uh, just any kind of medical uh, practitioner in a rural area or in an area of need is an essential first step to making sure that we, we, we uh, treat disease before it really gets uh, too far along. As an attorney, maybe you, and maybe not, you've dealt with the issue of caregivers. AARP says we have in Wisconsin 578,000 caregivers. So the question that AARP asks is, would you support a law or a regulation that requires hospitals to recognize and work with family, family caregivers, excuse me, when someone 
they work, they love is hospitalized? Well, I think that's a, a given. It should be a given. Should be a given. Yes. Okay. One thing that astonishes me is that uh, I, I lived for a time on the East Coast in Boston, and I went to law school in New York and graduate school in New Jersey. Those are expensive places to live. I cut my mortgage in half by returning to Milwaukee. And yet, our health care costs are second highest in the country. It makes no sense to me. So there, there needs to be a, a, a real comprehensive look at our health care, uh, the way we provide health care, and we need to find a way to make it cheaper. When I do hear about health care, what I don't hear is the lack of health care because my district is all pretty urban or suburban. Mm -hmm. What I hear is the cost of health care is prohibitive. We have to find a way to bring that down. And finally, um, you mentioned your differences with your opponents. Any other differences you want to highlight with your opponents on uh, your opponent on November 6th? The, the greatest thing is uh, uh, his environmental record or lack of it. I hear a lot of conservative Republicans say, you know, I'm thinking of voting Democrat this year because of Foxconn, not for the, s the spending, but for the environmental impact on the water that comes out of Lake Michigan and might get returned to Lake Michigan. They're very concerned about that. The other thing of great concern is the, the proposed mining up north. My opponent was a big proponent of that. I consider that a, a, a short-term gain and a long-term loss. If we pollute our precious water, resources, then we lose everything. I remind people that uh, tourism and agriculture are two of our leading industries in the state. They're in the top three to four to five industries in the state. They depend on a quality environment. If we pollute our, our rivers, lakes, and streams, we're going to lose all those people from Illinois who come up and fish and hunt and buy cottages in Wisconsin and support our economy. We're going to lose our, our strong agriculture if we do that. I've been endorsed by a couple of environmental groups, the Wisconsin League of Conservation Voters and uh, Clean uh, Wisconsin Action Fund. Uh, that's because I, I think we can walk and chew gum on the environment at the same time. We can make sure that we protect the environment and still protect those vital industries. Thank you. Dennis McBride of Wauwatosa is a Democratic candidate in the 13th Assembly District. The election is November 6th. Mr. McBride, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you. Thank you. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.